Hello everybody and welcome to the Snap This channel and today we're going to be asking a very interesting question about the internet. We do want your involvement so please make the most of my comment section today to let us know your opinion on what you think should change on this topic. And today's video, as you can tell by the title, is what can make the internet a better place. And this is not a video where we're going to be picking on the internet itself. We know that the internet as a whole is a good thing and it's got some bad things, but we're going to talk about this on a level playing field. But what sparked this conversation and why I'm making this video is because in the news recently the media have been slammed in terms of the press and social media on their behaviour and how things go about. So today I thought let's ask the question to the community and see what they think might or should be changed in social media and the internet. Now anyone who follows my channel will know my work mainly goes around Instagram, Snapchat and social media. Now these are obviously part of the internet, hence why I feel like I can breach my opinion from a business and YouTuber perspective. Now today we're going to be talking about the pros and the cons, obviously we're going to talk about what the internet does and then I'll mention where it should be changed in the cons section and like I said please let us know what you think. I'll leave a card up here if you think it is a good place or not and that poll will sort of give you a perspective of what people think um, but I hope you enjoy this video so let's get started. Now I'm not going to baby you guys, I'm not going to say what is the internet even though it's not really something you could possibly describe, it'd be interesting if I asked 100 people what they thought the internet was but to me the internet you Used to be like a massive database which has now turned into like a virtual world over the last 15 years that has had a big change in culture but that's pretty much what the internet is it's an online place that's all I'm going to talk about that now we're going to talk about the good parts that the internet has brought us so in terms of good things what do we have accessible from the internet that I hope would never disappear the first being the shops the ability to buy anything around the world and have it posted to your door within I'm gonna say three days a lot of places now can get stuff to your door like that which is really good because some shops in your local area especially if you live where we do don't store this specialist product so it's good just like I guess snapchat spectacles there's no snapchat shops around here so we can order those on the internet so that's one pro obviously being able to buy stuff that you are interested in now sticking with the interest side if you have a unique or something specialized you'll always be able to find someone on the internet or a web page that will support your hobby or interest which is really good because if you've got something specialist someone in your local area is probably not going to have the level that you want to talk about and finding them is a bit impossible but the internet is obviously somewhere you can find and have conversations about your specialist topics and with mine being snapchat I've made some great friends like Chris and Phil who I talk to on a weekly basis just about things in Snapchat that not the average user would want to talk about because it doesn't interest them and I find that the fact that you can build a community or find a community on the internet one of the best things about it because you can have that freedom of feeling excited and sharing stuff about something that you enjoy. Now to tell you a story about my past, I made an amazing friend on a game called Motorstorm Pacific Rift. And this is an off-road racing game. It's quite unique for, let's say, the AAA titles, but uh, not many people played it. But I had such a high interest in it, and I met someone there called Will who had the same interest, and we'd, we'd race each other, and we slowly became friends over and over the years. After we played Motorstorm, we moved on to a game called The Crew. And after that we sort of realised, hang on a second, we're really good mates here and he decided to invite me to his birthday party, which I did have to travel quite a far distance for that, so thanks Will. But uh, I went to his birthday party and hey presto, we had a photo and we even took good old Motorstorm there to sort of show our origin roots, which people find that story really unique. But if you do decide to meet up with anyone off the internet, please be aware of Strange Danger. It still exists, they are random people that you are meeting on the internet. I got to know Will over a couple of years and I knew by the end he wasn't going to kidnap me. So please make sure that if you do meet people on the internet that you do keep it. Obviously common sense and safety is always a priority when obviously going into the unknown. Which finally brings me to my final good point of the internet and that's internet dating. If you don't know it's around 60% of couples now meet either on dating apps or I guess Instagram. There are many ways that you can meet your partner on the internet and that seems to be the way it's going. Club statistics are shooting down as meeting online shoots up. We could make a special graph to show that off if we wanted to. But with a high statistic like that, obviously, online relationships and friendships are being met on the internet. Even if it is on a global scale, or in your local area. Some apps allow you now to put a range limit on stuff. So there are tons of benefits, of course, of the internet. Being able to get stuff quicker, whether that be things from the shops 
or making friends and relationships on the fly. And you can even do this in transport as well. You can meet people on the internet while you're going from one place to another, i.e. buses and trains. So you can obviously stay connected as we go along. Now today's video isn't about saying what the internet's for and why I love it so much. It's more to bring up the sort of things that we need to talk about, which is the harsh side of the web. So let me give you some cons of the internet. So let's talk about the cons of the internet. There could be loads of different cons that you'll come up with, but today I just wanna to raise two of them and then give you a solution and then you can tell me what you think of that solution. So the first thing I wanna talk about is anonymous naming on some websites like YouTube and I guess TikTok would be another one for this. Being able to have the choice of an anonymous name is like having a get out of free jail card. Just on the fact that you don't get linked to that online profile. So when me being called Kyle Lightning, I could create a username called Storm fan 101 I could slander someone on the internet and there's no way of putting those two bits of information together. So the anonymous side is where I find it becomes a bit risky. And as a YouTuber, you know this from your YouTube comment section, you get slandered on your looks, things you say, stuff that you do videos on all the time. You sort of just have to pass it over. You tend to find that you have 50 nice comments and it's the nasty one that gets to you. So, but because it's all anonymous, it's really hard to put a name to a face. Another side of the anonymous part of the internet that I don't like is Facebook community groups. Your local area always has one of these. Let's take Sentai's for example, they probably have a page called Sentai's Matters. And what it is, it's a group of people that live in that area that can keep up to date with floods or road closures, but you also find that people slander people out of the community as well. So if they've nearly been run over by someone from the community, they'll probably post it on there because they're so annoyed, they need to let everybody know, but it doesn't usually come from your name, it will just come from the page's name instead. So instead of it saying, John Smith is angry about a such and such, it will say St. Ives Matters is angry about a certain person in St. Ives. So the anonymous side's a bit risky. I've seen Facebook groups like my old local area do have the name instead of the page name because obviously it did stop the aggression but you do find some of them don't moderate these pages, they don't have good admins and it tends to just be they'll approve anything whatever the weather. So that's another part of the internet I think needs to be more moderated, not necessarily changed, but get rid of the anonymous naming. I know it's gonna be hard and the internet has been built up on that, but maybe certain platforms, I know Facebook currently do it, but maybe ask for proof of identity, which we're gonna to come to in a minute. So what do I think is the answer for what can make the internet a better place? And it is, of course, taking away the anonymous side on websites that don't necessarily need it. So I'm not saying taking it away from all, because obviously some websites are built on the anonymous part, which sometimes is irrelevant. But I'm thinking if you do have, obviously, a website that links you to profiles where you as a person can be a profile and grow likes and follows on it, then maybe have a side that links you to a real person. Because actions on certain websites should be traced back to the user and be prosecuted if, of course, you've done anything. And we're talking really serious stuff here, like bullying, grooming, that sort of thing, but that should be accountable for. And at the moment, the internet can't really support it. The local police services can do their best, but obviously they're built on evidence and the internet can be quite cleared of evidence very quickly. And with big platforms, I'm not gonna name any because I know they have their own issues, but platforms may not help or release the information without a proper valid reason. So big companies, small police forces, sometimes it's not gonna go very well. So obviously maybe linking it to real people or having the background information give that full thorough info, that is how I would answer the question. The other thing is, is don't be stupid on the internet, but you, you can't stop the idiots, I'm afraid. Uh, just think about it this way, the idiots you went to school with are on the internet as well. So it's just a big place, it's a virtual world where anything can happen, but can we make it a better place? Hopefully we can. I think we all have to be a better quality person, we need to know what's right about the internet, and that's how I would answer the question. But of course, to back up my evidence on ID, there is an application that is currently already doing this, and this app is called Ubo. 
So Yubo is the prime example that I'm going to be using for my evidence based in this video. And Yubo is a video and audio chat room where you can join and talk to random strangers about pretty much anything for as long as you like. As long as the room is open, you can chat away. Now Yubo have implemented a verification system which gives you a little tick, just like Instagram and Twitter. However, you don't get it for being famous, an influencer or a celebrity. You actually get it from uploading identification into an application to say, you're a real person. Now Yoti is the application you'll use. What you do is take a photograph of your ID, whether that be passport or driver license. You send it across to them and usually within about 48 hours they'll say if you're a real person or not and they send that information across to Yubo. Once Yubo have that information what they'll now do is give you a yellow tick on their application to say your name, your age and your photographs have been verified as the real person. And this tells people on the application that who they are seeing and talking to is exactly what their profile says, instead of being what we call on the internet catfished, where you're pretending to be somebody else. Now I'm fortunate to know someone who's verified on Yubo and uses this as an active social media, so I'm going to ask him a simple question of, do you think that the verification helps on Yubo? So Liam, what's Yubo like with verification? Yeah, Yubo's good because uh, it authenticates any kind of a profile or any account, so when you talk to other people on there, you know they are who they say they are. So yeah, that's basically a good positive thing to have. Okay. I think that should be on quite a few other apps. And what do you think the age situation on Yubo is like? The age situation, obviously, um, if it's with Yubo, it's categorised with uh, younger people and older people. So obviously if you're in like 18 plus, you're on a separate category. So you'll never see any younger people in that, uh, in that section um, unless they lie not verify themselves and lie about their age, but that's why the verification place is there for you, but I think it's very unique. Now, if any of you don't know who Liam actually is, he's my cameraman, so uh, we'll get back into the Snap This Studio. To finish on this video, I did throw out this question this week on my Twitter, my YOLO, and even my Snapchat story to say, what would you think it's better? And I got some responses from my friends. Some of them even work in social media, which is really good. So I'd just like to share some of those responses. Let's start off with Twitter. Julia replied, what's wrong with it? And why should we change it? We can't change the internet, only ourselves who created the internet together. We had Nate, he responded saying no comment sections, again back to what I was saying about anonymous comment sections. The best answer I got was through one of Chris Heger's friends who tweeted him back after retweeting uh, my message. Being more tolerated and giving people the benefit of the doubt, the internet started off anonymous as a place for people to behave and act different for better or for worse. So again, another one saying that the internet can't be helped, it is just us that is making it a worse place. It's the people on the internet that's changing it. But it's nice to know that people that I talk to have the same opinion it is about just the people on the internet, not actually the websites themselves. So that is my sort of case study of what, what could we do. I know again, I was going more the ID route and obviously again, making sure you know your actions what you do on the internet can not be prosecuted, but be tracked back to you. So that's pretty much everything I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it, but please let me know in the comment section below in full detail what you think should change. Obviously, I don't want ban TikTok or anything silly like that, but if that's what we have to do, let us know in the comment section below. And of course, if you're new around here, my name's Carl Lightning. I run the Snap This channel. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did like it, then leave us a like. And like I said, please leave some feedback in the comment section below and I'll bring some more videos like this soon. So we'll catch you in the next video.